what do you know? We decided to come back with part three because we thought it was <laughs> because we thought it was super important to not just leave everybody hanging. It part one, as I said before, this is the ringless wife three-part series it's important that you watch number one for context it's important that you watch number two for context but also a continuation of the story and then number three so that it almost feels complete Mm. um part one we spoke more about cd's testimony her dating this guy for seven years who never married her the lesson she learned in all of it actually the foolishness that was happening through it Mm. how she got to the point where she was like i'm done it's over part two was more um what being over looks like Mm -hmm. um the heartache and i also shared a bit about my testimony dating a guy who um lied to me we get into this relationship the Holy Spirit starts crying through me in a very audible way, warning me about this relationship that's about to go south. Mm. I disobeying that voice because emotionally I'm just so in it. I'm feeling my age catching up with me. I'm feeling all of these lies that the world tells us, plus my own foolishness, get into the relationship and it is worse than what I think it is. Mm. This relationship is part of the reason why I end up falling ill. Um, God being merciful and being so filled with grace delivers me from that sickness. Um, and then now we're now, now we're moving into this healing process, what the healing process looks like. But I think it's also very important that we talk about what life looks like afterwards, because I think that's the part, a lot of people who are especially going through this pain of being in a relationship they know needs to come to an end or in that in between where space where you're now going through the healing and healing is a process so to even say it comes to an end i'm not quite sure about that but being in that space the height of trying to heal from it and now part three being what life on the other side looks like because as i said there is another side Mm. and you will get there Mm. please remember that do not allow anybody to tell you your pain is your pain and it will not end it will end that goes it will end it will and when i say end i don't necessarily mean you will not feel the pain of it ever again it means that the pain will get less it will it Mm. won't be it won't feel like this forever it won't hurt like this forever and also you'll learn to just accept it Mm. and keep moving forward um i think what does yours look like what does your other side look like it looks like freedom wow i think in many ways that relationship was bondage wow it really really was and I came into myself in a way that I didn't even know I needed to. Yes. And so there were many things that in the relationship I never, I, I just didn't do because, because of the relationship. Yes. And so my social life was very hindered. Um, and I didn't even know it. Yes. Um, there was a level of shame attached to the relationship because of the fact that we were living together and we were not married and so and he was embarrassing you in front of other people yeah to an extent yeah yeah you know to an extent um not to say that i was embarrassed to be with him out there yes when i mean what, what i mean by that is at that point people had now started to see things like your friend seeing the funny faces he was pulling behind your back him having yeah. embarrassed you in front of the elders at the church but even before all of that yeah okay. there was still a level of because i knew that what we were doing was wrong yeah and we needed to make a change but we yes. hadn't yes and so i i put up a bit of a wall between me and other people okay. not too much but a bit of a yes. wall. so having my friend that would come and visit us um i think we became friends from like 2021 um that was almost like the wall coming down a little bit yes um and so yeah there was just 
a lot about me that I can say I didn't know until after the relationship. Yeah. yeah. And there was breaking away from that thing of closing myself in. I still remember there was a social group at church every Sunday. There was a whole WhatsApp group. I was added to it. And every Sunday, someone people would go to someone's house. And it was like, oh, let's do this. Let's, you know, let's go to the beach. Let's do, let's, let's have lunch together. I was part of this group. I never went to any of their get togethers. Why? Yeah. I can't even answer that. Yes. But I never went. Yes. You know, so mm-hmm. there was that thing. And so afterwards, all of a sudden there's like, oh my gosh, people can come over. Yes. And I actually like people coming yes. over. I love hosting. I love cooking I for love people. I love hosting. I love cooking for people, you know. And oh my gosh, we now are spending overnights praying, talking yeah. about the Lord. And, you know, then it's the worship sessions yeah. that I'm hosting and all of these things it's like wow you know Mm. there's this life after this person Mm. Mm. and yeah we'll talk about the journey getting there but yes that's basically what the beauty started to look like for me yes i think for me life after those relationships look like looks like strength yeah I discovered things about myself I did not know were there. Mm. I discovered things, I discovered a strength in myself that I just did not know was there. I think part of the reason why, besides my own insecurities, my own shortcomings and everything else that I'm working through, on their behalf, I think part of the reason why, especially with the last relationship I was in, I think part of the reason why the guy mishandled me the way he did was because he knew he could. Mm. He saw somebody who was not as vocal and is not as pushy and is not as commanding and demanding and was not as strict. He saw somebody who he could take advantage of and he did. Yeah. He saw somebody who was not strict, who was not as he... I think might have felt strong or whatever it was. And he took, he mishandled me. He Mm. really, really did mishandle me. And when I look back at even the things he would say to me, like how he talks to me and um, how he would talk to me and the way he treated me. And like I said, just the things he would do in the relationship that were just so not on. And then the relationship came to an end and I was still battling. I don't want to be bitter. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to have emotions that do not need to be there because of course as we've been speaking to you guys about being the um what is this called being the whole um matters of the heart the deliverance yes and learning in deliverance about the matters of the heart and how when your heart is not in a good place Mm. it can prohibit you from receiving certain things Mm. and from breakthroughs and all of that and not knowing that before and now being in that because of our mentor and our pastor I went through a period where I was battling with my heart. Mm. I was battling with the way I was feeling towards this person. Mm. All of a sudden, I'm looking back on this relationship and I'm seeing how he used or mis, well, mishandled me mm. and um, emotionally put me through the pits, like emotionally abused me, actually. Mm. Um, and how he manipulated me in some ways. And when I say manipulation, I mean, for example, saying I understand certain things, but then acting contrary to that understanding like Mm. oh no i'm okay with this i get it this is Mm. where you're at mentally what your faith tells you but then still manipulating me to go against it or almost choose something different Mm. and i don't know if he's aware that he did it but it was a it was a form of manipulation Mm. the things he would say the way he would behave after i would say no to certain things Mm. that's a form of manipulation absolutely um And so going through this thing, I started to feel these very strong negative feelings towards him and it started to become a stronghold. And I felt like God was very, very specific in telling me, like, you cannot feel this. This is not of me. I'm not this person. I am love. I am patience. I'm all of these things that are pure and are good. And for you to move beyond this, you're going to have to break the stronghold. And Mm. I remember God telling me it was a stronghold because it was a repeated cycle of thoughts and patterns that was starting to really take root. Mm. Mm. And um, obviously working through those emotions, getting to the realization that 
it doesn't mean because you forgive somebody and you understand or you have compassion and mercy on them that you have to continue a friendship or any sort of relationship. Oh, yeah. And so my strength was found in that, Mm. was that actually you've been through this thing. This person has shown you what they are about in this season because everybody can change. There's deliverance for everybody. Mm. There's turnaround for everybody. When you give your life, when you surrender um, your life to God, I truly do believe that there's transformation. Everybody is a candidate for transformation if they want it. Absolutely. So all I can speak to is the person he is in this season. What God does in his life moving forward, I will never speak on that. I am not God. Mm. I've seen what he's done in my life. So who am I to even think that he couldn't make changes in this person's life? But the person I know you to be in this season, I don't want to be around that person. I don't want to know that person. That person wounds me. Mm. That Mm. person does things that I don't believe God wants for to be done to me. Absolutely. Um, I also, this person... um, the person you are in this season is not is just not we 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 just can't we can't we can't we can't and so the strength comes in being able to ignore those phone calls Mm. it comes in being able to say i'm not going to respond i'm not going to avail myself and it's not because i'm mad at you or because i have all these negative strong feelings towards you it's because i've discovered i don't have to subject myself to it yeah i don't Mm. Part of the healing process has been understanding that I'm actually stronger than this. I actually do have the goal, as Mm. you put it, to Mm. say no. Mm. No, I'm not available for this. Mm. I'm not available for you to come in and out my life as you please and hurt me. Mm. I'm not available for Mm. that. And it's been such an amazing time because there was a time when he called, I felt like I had to answer. I don't know who was making me think I had to answer, (laughs) but I would answer diligently. And I'm like, (laughs) the phone call would end and I would leave. The phone call would end and I would feel worse than I felt going into that phone call because he would say things and he would tell me about women he was now dating and say, and I would just be like, why did I? I feel this like I've been kicked all over my body. Mm. Why did I answer that phone call? And now it's like I'm not answering. What am I answering for? Yeah, we're not in that space. I to even say we're friends would not be quite the truth mm. because you don't treat friends this way. I'm still trying to learn myself and unlearn certain things. I can't do that while I'm still in close proximity mm. to this. Mm. No. So life after all of this for me looks like strength and that ability to just say no. And we struggle with that so much. We struggle with just saying no. The process of getting there. Not easy. Absolutely not. Tears. Lots of them. Anxiety. High levels. Unforgiveness. Confusion. Mm. pain a whole lot of pain days where you just don't want to get out of bed Mm. to face it feels like way too much Mm. Mm. but then you do you do and I think yeah in my case I had to yeah you know there's another human being that relies on me yes I had to I had to get up. I had to, for a time, look at his stuff in my room, you know, until that fateful day. You were like, oh, 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 the airport, the wickedness, the confrontation, the whole incident. The whole thing. Completely and utterly shook my boots. (laughs) The boots I don't wear, but shook them. Nonetheless, what happened that story still shocks me (laughs) city you have to tell the people what happened when you decided your stuff has got to To go go. yeah yeah i think it shocks you because i'm not that person (laughs) it shocks me because you're not that person and it shocks me because of the person he is oh yeah absolutely yeah so the time when he left his stuff i think 
God was so kind in helping with the, well, not helping, and tethering slowly. Yes. Because it wasn't a rip. It wasn't a sudden sever. Yeah. You know? Oh. I think that would have really left like, you bleeding. Fully. <laughs> as, as <laughs> bleeding out. Yeah. <laughs> bleeding all over the people. Bleeding, bleeding all over the people. <laughs> yes. So it was a it was an untethering that God was doing and, and just slowly cutting away the strings. And so um this one day after months of no contact God was like this stuff has to go because I'm dealing with you and I'm trying to take you through healing and part of the healing is the cleansing of your home yes and please understand the cleansing of my home had nothing to do with sage and all of those things yes. he, it had to do with mm-hmm. The fact that my relationship with God was now building to a point where my home was now my prayer altar. And so I prayed a lot at home. Yes. People came to my home to pray a lot. I was now hosting like prayer sessions and worship sessions. Yes. But his stuff was there and that was tainting. Yes. And so, yeah, one day I decided I'm not going to church. I'm taking his stuff out. His stuff has to go. Wow. Because it's it's now becoming a, a, a spiritual hindrance yes. to me. And this is obviously through the instruction of the Lord. Through the instruction of the yeah. Lord. Um, and so because he was in another city, his car was also still there. So my plan was, you know what? And I was nice about it. I mean, I have friends who were like i don't understand why you didn't first of all you were on the top floor at the complex why didn't you just throw the stuff down to the bottom? Yeah, let it <laughs> let it smash yes, on the ground yes, yes. pack it in dustbin bags and shove it in his car i know somebody who left the stuff by the trash and people help themselves to the <laughs> stuff. See, yes. this, is, this was like a whole garden <laughs> sale because it's like what you not even a sale come and take as you please yeah, a free for all. jumble sale yes <laughs> <laughs> And so I was, and I think in my mind, I was like, he has done the most to me and he has hurt me so much, but I never want to stand before God to have to explain why his stuff was trashed. Do you know what I mean? No, that's not right. Exactly. And he's also God's child. Yes. Doesn't matter whether he serves God or not. He's still God's child. He's still God's child. And so I took his stuff so nicely, folded it, put it in, put it in his suitcases, um, whatever was in the, was in the laundry, you know, washed it, dried it, packed it. Yes. You know? Yes. And, um, yeah, packed it neatly in his car. And I even thought to the point where I was like, well, this stuff is so much that at least there must be a driver's seat and a passenger seat yes. free. So I packed it strategically in his car in that there's space for the driver and the passenger. The passenger. And I did that. And then, yeah, I think it was a couple of weeks after that happened. I hadn't heard from him for months. And so I thought maybe there would be still months or I don't know when I'll hear yes, from him again, yes. but his stuff's out of my house. His car is still outside, but his stuff is out of my home. Yes. You know? Um, and yeah, next thing, a couple of weeks later, I get a message to say, I'm sending my friend to come get the car and I'll be around. So I was like, oh, okay. And I didn't say anything about his stuff. I was like, cool. I don't have to explain yes. any of it. You know, he had, Ample opportunity. Exactly. To come and collect his yes. things. He also didn't bother. And I don't know why I say this and why I thought this at the time. He didn't bother to contact me yes. for all those months. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And um, wow. it was actually during a time where something quite hectic had happened where I was staying. Not to e- And it was all over the news. Not to even... Yes call and be like you guys okay yes like i'm hearing that this do you know what i mean anyway 
So, yeah, he eventually um, sends this friend. And I I don't know why, but he clearly didn't tell people. That you guys had broken we, up. That we had broken up. A lot of people didn't know. They all, like, when I'd bump into people, they'd be like, oh, you know. Mm. So even this friend had no clue. Anyway, so he comes. I give him the key. And I just say to the friend, um, yeah, there you go. I didn't even tell the friend that the, the car's packed. So that night. Oh, my gosh. When he flew in. I got a phone call and I knew that that phone call came with fire. And oh again, gosh. just like you, why did I answer the phone? Yeah. I shouldn't have. You sh- Oh my god. I gosh. shouldn't have answered. Yes. Anyway, I answered and wow, the bullets. The verbal bullets. Absolutely. It was just how can you do this to me? What kind of wickedness? And it's like, this is your stuff. I don't understand. Also, do you think that part of the reason he reacted like that was because there was humiliation? Maybe he was with people? I completely believe that. And so he wanted to show out. He wanted to show out. And, and it's what like, he got was a car I'm, loaded with his stuff. Yes, and no space for those people that he was trying to show out to, to sit. And it's like, that's not my problem. That's not my problem. Now we have to figure out where we're going to go and offload the stuff because you don't have a home this side. You're staying with me. Yes. So where are you going to take it? Well, you're going to have to figure that out. You're going to have to figure that out. You should have thought of that before you did all this this foolishness. Yeah. So, yeah. And so I don't even know how we got to this, but... We got here because we were talking about um, kind of the process. The process... um, after yes yeah and so um that was the severing yes the last sever that had to happen yes the last i guess piece of untethering that had to happen because then from there i could fully move on yes i really just felt it in my home that i like yes you know yes and so that was it was so needed and from there i could it, it was almost like there was now an acceleration yes in my moving on yes started to happen wow um, and yeah i mean there were other things that still needed to be sorted out yes. but it didn't have to happen in my house of course yeah i think for me the untying or the process was again i go back to this i promise you this pastor is God sent. I mean, yeah, he for really is. him to even come into our lives at a mm. time like this and help us untie. I think I made mention very briefly on my Instagram story where I was saying to people, if you, I was one of those people where when people spoke to me about spiritual things, I would be rolling my eyes and be thinking, please, can you keep it pushing? I don't know what you're talking about, but please don't talk about it here. <laughs> um, and I used to, I, I remember even being in the, in the height of my Miss Curvy Lala brand and my nudity being all the way out there when i say nudity like being in thongs on social media and i remember people like messaging me to say you need to repent ma'am you need to repent sure. you are going to hell if you don't now i don't agree with that type of messaging yeah. as such <laughs> especially when you're dealing with a non-believer because yeah. you you, you want to be very sensitive and careful I would go hard on them. I was the type who would message them back and be like, the fact that you're on my page tells me you need to repent too. I used to come <laughs> out at the gums. I would cut your Achilles tendon and expect you to walk. I was like, I'm still, I'm going to give it to you as good as you give it to me. Mm. Um, not even trying to hear what the person was saying. And so when I met this man of God and him coming at it at, And please also understand this. The reason why I say he's God sent is not just because of the spiritual enlightenment he's brought and the the, the help. It's also been because obviously with daddy passing away, he has been the person who stepped in as a father. Mm -hmm. There was a very large period in my life where when I, when daddy passed away, there was such a huge gaping hole. There was nobody who stepped in as a father figure. Mm -hmm. Nobody, Mm -hmm. nobody. And he came in without even trying to be a father and became that. Yeah. He stepped in. And when he said, if you need to talk, call, message. I mean, sometimes we were talking at like two, three in the morning. Yeah. You know, trying to he's work that through. Available. He's that available. Yeah. And that it's loving amazing. and that honest and mm. working through these things. And um, 
by the time I got into that process of untying, especially spiritually, um, releasing, like breaking those spiritual ties, it was the most uncomfortable but much needed period because that was the time where I had to start getting honest. Mm. It was so awkward. Oh, Lord help me. It was so awkward because I was sitting in his office telling him about some of the foolishness I had gotten up to. And this is like a grown, and like I said, he's come to be a father. So it's like looking at your dad and saying... I had sex with this guy and he's asking very specific questions like, then what did he do with the condom? And I'm like, oh, he he flashed it. No, but did you see him flash it or did you just hear it? No, I just heard it. Okay, so he didn't flash it because this is what's happening in your life. So it was those type of conversations that were like, I'm now sitting here and I'm having to have these conversations that feel so surreal, Hmm. so un oh my gosh, I, like, like, when did we get here? I need to understand when we got here. Who dropped me off? Who was driving this vehicle? <laughs> because I do not agree to any of it. Yeah, yeah. But I did. Yeah. And it was that process of we need to start untying. And this is what it looks like. And this is what you need to say. And this is what you need to do. Mm. This is what you need to come here and do. Mm. Like, help, holding my hand through the process and when I say there was tears there was moments where I just wanted to message these guys and specifically my ex and just say something that was just not godly godly. Mm. and having to restrain myself actually I feel like God also just restraining me and being like you will not talk to my child like that Mm. I don't know who you think Mm. you are you made decisions that landed you in this hot water too Mm. Mm relax um and just going through that motions uh, that motion of ah oh, td you know spiritual ties and untying is not easy it's not at all it is a process and it will and it can get physically exhausting too even though there's a spiritual matter it can mm. physically get exhausting mm. too mm. um and then coming to this point where i'm starting to make peace I'm starting to make peace with the decisions and I, and I'm choosing to make with the decisions and the mistakes. And those mm. are two different things. Yes. You can make yes. a mistake and then there's making poor decisions. Yes. I made poor decisions because a lot of it was disobedience. Mm. Um, but making peace with that. Cause as I was saying to Nolutando when we were in, when I came to your city was, I feel like I'm walking around with the scarlet letter. Mm. And it was for the longest time. It was like the shame I carried, not just because of my previous brand. And, and I feel like that's a different topic and I'll get into that, but also because of the type of relationships I found myself in time and time again. And even, um, our pastor helping us understand why this pattern was reoccurring Yes, and how to start breaking that pattern. Mm. Mm. Um, it looks like peace. It looks like strength. It looks like understanding. It looks like forgiveness, not mm. just for the person who hurt me, but for hurting myself, mm. 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 for hurting myself and also God's forgiveness um, because he's such a forgiving and loving father for yeah. not just hurting myself as his child, but for hurting him. Mm for hurting him, for violating him Mm. who lives inside of me because Mm. it was a very big violation. How could I say I've got the spirit of God in me and yet be violating my temple this way? Mm. How could I be doing that? Um, And it's, again, not to say I'm perfect and that I'm not going to need forgiveness for things in the future. I do need forgiveness. Mm. Mm. Um, But there's peace, guys. And I just need you to understand that, again, this pain is not going to last forever. You're not going to cry like mm. this forever. No. You're going to start having those relationships, as you said, where now you're hosting. Now you've got those friendships. Now you've got, mm. I, I still need new friends. Um, <laughs> if there's anybody listening and you think you want to be my friend, DM me and let's see. Oh my gosh. Um, but yeah, just everything, the, the, the amazing things that have happened after that for you. Yeah, it's, it, wow. Um, I really feel like God sent me people. Yeah, that's um, what it is. He sent me, yeah, he sent me people. And he sent me people that were right for the season. Yes. Um, because what I've also learned is there are friends for seasons. Yes. And there are friends that nothing actually has to happen for them to no longer have 
to be in your life yes. for that for the next yes. season. Yes. And for that season, I really just God was just so gracious. He sent me people, he sent me examples. Yes. He sent me where I had questions. He sent me examples. Yes. Not just answers in my ear but yes. examples and it's what i needed to see for the narrative and the 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 my my mindset to, to shift, change yes. and to shift um he sent me people who can pray he wow. sent me people who can pray because i needed to learn how to pray yeah you know i needed to learn how to build my own altar my yes. own prayer altar in my home and you needed people to pray with and for you yes. even when you know how to pray Peter, yes. when Peter was yes. in jail it was when the church came together Absolutely. after James had been beheaded yeah. that actually this is how we're getting Peter out of this yeah, yeah. Peter was in jail praying yeah. yeah but we need to pray for him too yeah and I also believe mm. that I strongly believe that there were a lot of people who were praying for me even when I was in that relationship wow. that's how for, you came out for my release wow and I really believe that and I want to just say thank you to all those people. Wow. You know, even though they haven't come to say that that's what they were doing. Know. I know that that's what they were doing because of the amount of times I saw those concerned looks, you know, and I, I, I heard those concerned questions, you know, and even though I had an answer, I still heard the questions. Yeah. And they stayed with me. And so I do believe that those people were absolutely praying for me and I will forever be grateful for their prayers yes you know um and then it it's it also looks like me coming into my giftings wow you know wow. i didn't know that i was so good at cooking yeah i just used to just cook yeah you know you need to feed them man because <laughs> <I'm... laughs> you you need to forgive him okay <laughs> you know so um I didn't know that I that cooking is a gift. Yeah. And so it and it actually started with me because of the fact that I was hosting people. Yeah. I felt like I needed to feed them. And then it was like, oh my gosh. And then there were a couple of friends who now felt like they and you know who you are who felt like they now no longer needed to cook in their own homes that when they were hungry and they felt like, you know restaurant quality I need, food. Exactly. They'd be like, so listen I've brought the groceries and I'm coming over. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah. okay, you know, so, yeah. but because I love it so much, you know, there it is. It's like, I didn't know that this was a thing. Um, I didn't know that I had the gift of hosting. Yes. I actually thought I hated hosting, yes. to be honest. I used to host friends in my old life doing yes. sinful things, yes. but that was like, once every now and then or once a month I think it was and even if you know that, yeah. and so and with that it was like that was enough yes and so going from that to every couple of weeks sometimes a few days in a row I loved it um and yeah so it's God sends you what you need yes in the season to help with your deliverance and to help with your healing and then of course our spiritual father yes. you know at the end of last year um who has been wow yes a godsend yes because now he's delving into the things that those people or the the, the, the consequences the, yeah the consequences and other people can't can't help me with yes. that. You know, yes. The people that surround you, the tribe that yes. God sends you. You have to deal with it now. Now this is the stuff you have to deal with. Yes. And a big one is, is, is forgiveness. Yes. Forgiveness of myself yes. for making stupid, stupid decisions, you know, yeah. and really sometimes ignorantly and sometimes not so much. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and forgiveness of myself for bringing my daughter into it. Yes. Um, into a mess like that and really being not being a good example yes. in that time um, and then forgiveness for this guy yeah you know um, it's it's that is a daily thing yes and I test myself every day I mean our spiritual father always I mean initially when he was like you need to forgive these people and I'm like how do I know whether I have 
because, yes, yes. you know what I mean? Because today I feel like I have it and tomorrow all of a sudden <laughs> exactly. I'm thinking not so nice things. Exactly. So he was like, just think of that person and what comes to your heart when you think of that person. Wow. Then you'll know whether you've forgiven them or not. Yeah. And so that's a daily, daily thing. Yes. Um, but yeah, and, and I think what's really, really important is just taking responsibility. I take full responsibility for going into that relationship. Um and allowing it to continue for so long exactly allowing it to continue for so long god was very clear in so many different ways that this was wrong and i still continued you know so yeah i think we're going to end it there but my last encouragement would be if you find yourself in this situation pray more Mm. spend time getting to know yourself again forgive yourself take it a day at a time yeah if you know somebody in the situation, pray for them. Yeah. Breathe. It is going to, to be, be okay. okay. And don't judge people. Don't I really judge. feel like, yeah, it's, it's not, yeah. It's going to, to be, be okay. okay. 